The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazek Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to another episode of The Sharp Edge. Today I'm down in Bimbrook, Ontario, catching up with Mazek's Henry Prinzen. Henry, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. We've got some awesome corn here. We're at Leosta Farms and we're catching up with Nick Oreskovic. Henry, why is Nick on the sharp edge? Nick's on the sharp edge, Burn, because he's a champion in nitrogen management. He's really using all the info that we've brought to the table. He's using some of the on-calf grants to, you know, advance his nitrogen management program. So Nick's, you know, he's wide dropping with an old applicator. It works really well. You know, he's got some interesting ways of doing it. And Nick's starting to bring stabilizers to the table too. And stabilizers, hey, we have some Mazex data. You know, when we look at stabilizers, even when we're wide dropping or knifing in nitrogen in the trench, we're still having significant losses without a stabilizer. When we add that stabilizer, we bring those losses, we cut them in half or more, we bring them back down the earth. Yeah, we have losses, higher losses with broadcast all up front, but when we split apply, we still have losses. You know, if we don't close that trench when we're knifing in nitrogen, that's a lot of loss. So we need to use stabilizers and split apply nitrogen to maximize our nitrogen use efficiency. And Nick's doing all that on his farm. It's a great system. Well, let's take a look at how Nick does it. Hey Nick, so we're out here in Binbrook, Ontario. Can you tell me a little bit about your farm, who you farm with and uh, you know your rotation, just kind of what you guys do here? Yeah, so I uh, farm here with uh, my wife and another local farmer. I'll uh, kind of work, uh, share equipment and work back and forth together. It's a corn soy wheat rotation. Um, this year we've got roughly uh, 1,400 acres of corn planted. You know, we're in front of this Y dropper here. Can you give us a bit of a background on what your previous nitrogen management strategies on corn was, uh, you know, before we bought this side dresser with the Y drops? Yeah, so I guess traditionally it's always been uh, like an upfront application, uh, 28% uh, with the sprayer and herbicide uh, mixed together um, pre-emerge. And uh, we just felt uh, we could probably do a better job than, uh, than that to try and mitigate uh, denitrification and uh, try and manage your uh, nitrogen rates a little better. So we um, kind of thought uh, we had an opportunity with the uh, off-calf grants to uh, you know, have a little R&D fund. So we went to, uh, found this applicator, purchased it, and uh, we ended up taking off uh, all the coulters. Uh, we weren't too keen on the placement of putting the nitrogen um, 15 inches away from the plant. So we actually put Y drops on the, on the applicator, as you can see, and uh, that way we, we kind of get the nice placement that we like right along, the, right along the root zone along the plants. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So, you know, do you want to tell us a little bit about why you ended up going with a side dresser? You know, we, you said you didn't want to put the nitrogen in the middle of the row. We want to put it by the plant. You know, how did the, how's this machine work? How do you have it set up out in the field usually? Yeah, so we could have went the wide drop route on the sprayer and I didn't really want to tie up the sprayer. Um, once you put the wide drops on, it's not a, a crazy job, but it's enough uh, when you want to be spraying. You know, it could be spraying your wheat or, uh, you know, we've stuck a nap on beans, uh, herbicide and things like that. So I thought, well, let's just go the applicator route. It matches the planter. Um, it worked well. Um, last year, or the first year we did it, uh, we had uh, just a conventional tractor on it uh, with the tires set in at 60 inches and the applicator at 120 inches. Uh, just wasn't too happy with uh, the amount of corn that you're running over. Uh, you get off a little bit and you're running over four rows and uh, it's kind of heartbreaking when you're, all your little babies getting run over out in the field. So um, this year we went to a two track um, tractor, uh, set at 120 to match the applicator. And uh, it's also our planter tractor. So now we're same GPS lines, um, same tire tracks. So we're we're a lot less tramping this year. I'm pretty happy with, with how that worked out. Still, it's a tough pill to swallow when you're out there driving over it. Um, kind of the same story as fungicide on the corn with the sprayer. Um, it's just it's sad to see, but at the end of the day, you don't really notice it. And it's definitely a benefit as to not doing it. 
For sure, that's awesome, right? Staying on the same tracks, we're controlling traffic, we're nitrogen management, we're doing all the good things we need to do, right? So Nick, you're doing variable rate. How do you do it? How's it look with this system? Yeah, so we, we go uh, initially with our herbicide in 28% um, um, pre-emerge and uh, we're putting roughly, between that and the starter fertilizer, we're roughly 80 pounds of nitrogen. Um, coming back in, we're going, uh, you know, 30, seem to be averaging around that 38 to 40 gallons per acre with the side dress unit. Um, uh, we just want to make sure we have enough nitrogen there for the plant. So uh, that being variable rate, uh, you know, we kind of cut back on the high organic matter soils um, and, you know, you kind of up it uh, in those Lower, lower organic matter areas, and we're just uh, putting our nitrogen where we get the most value out of it. You know, the other thing you've said, you've you started using stabilizers. So can you tell us a little bit about how you've been using nitrogen stabilizers now that you've went to split applying? You know, are you using them up front with, you know, part of your weed and feed and then coming back with them again? Like, how, how have you fit them into your rotation? So, full disclosure, we still do the odd farm. Um, all up front, um, ones with, uh, you know, lots of headlands or tricky fields, just to, uh, again, get away from the tramping and that. Um, those fields, we definitely do all nitrogen up front, or sorry, all the, um, all of it has stabilizer. Um, and the fields that we come back in and side dress, uh, we didn't do stabilizer up front, but all the side dress acres get um, stabilizer. Right on, yeah, so we're obviously stabilizing that nitrogen to make sure we're not losing it to volatility when we put it on early and if the ground gets wet, right? You know, Nick, I, I looked at your corn, it looks really good. Are you pretty happy with, you know, how's this working or you got some future plans, kind of where you want to go in the future with nitrogen management, some new ideas? Yeah, so last year, um, I was, it definitely, uh, I think it saved our bacon, to be honest, um, doing it this way. Um, there's a lot of corn in the area that you could just tell from, from driving by that it was definitely struggling, lacking nitrogen. And our corn was still a pretty healthy color and you know that deep green that you like to see. Um, it, of course, last year was a fairly wet, consistently rainy season. Um, this year, it's kind of turning out to be the same. So, and our corn looks awesome. Um, pretty happy with it. Um, going towards the future, I don't know if we uh, end up getting uh, like a 120 foot sprayer to match the, the corn or the planters um, and then we could get away from this and going tram lines if we ended up going narrow rows um, to kind of uh, avoid tramping the corn. Um, that's really, to me that's, you know, it's a, one of the down, definitely a downfall is the tramping of the corn. Uh, you also have to figure out wear and tear on the machine and you got some extra compaction um, from going over it. So you got to kind of weigh those benefits, but I think, I definitely think it's a win. Um, it's just whether or not it's the right fit all the time for you is, is kind of a question too, so. So there you have it, some great insights from Nick. Um, Henry, I see about three takeaways here, and I think the first thing for me, split application. Yeah, so burn split application gives us a little bit of time to watch the crop, you know, grow, advance, and then we can kind of react to the crop. Have we had lots of water? Do we yeah. need more nitrogen? Has it been hot and dry? Has it been hot and wet? And we're gonna have high mineralization. We can kind of dial in our rates and apply to the crop what yeah. it needs. Hey. We're in some clay country here. Some years we only get 180 yeah. bushels. This year we can go for 250. Mm -hmm. We need to apply. Split applying gives us that kind of chance to change it up. Yeah. Second for me, variable rate application. Yeah, so variable rate application, that's probably the future burn, right? We can dial it back in those high organic matter soils where we're gonna mineralize lots of nitrogen. And you know, maybe, maybe we do add a little bit more in some of those high yield potential spots. And then in those lighter soils where we're not mineral, mineralizing much nitrogen, or on those clay knolls where we actually have a good stand, but we just aren't that confident yeah. in how much nitrogen we have, we can up those rates, dial them back where we don't need them, and, you know, save some money on nitrogen, but also grow the best crop yeah. possible. Final thing, um, you know, he's really making some good use of stabilizers. Yeah, stabilizers, right? We've had this tool in the toolbox and maybe we were a little slower to adopt it and OCAF came along and, you know, we started using that. They're a great tool, even when we're split applying, when we're managing our nitrogen other ways, 
we can just dial it up that much more and reduce our losses and keep it in the ground, up our nitrogen use efficiency, make more money as farmers. Mm. Hey, great stuff, Henry. Um, another great episode of The Sharp Edge. We will see you down the road on The Sharp Edge.